today. Man, I feel God in this place today. Yes. Amen. I feel God in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. You go to, uh, as a kid, I remember getting ready. We would, couldn't, couldn't wait to get to the car. And I was juggling. Yeah, we went to the car. Or go to Six Flags or, or, or go somewhere, man. And you just get all the time. You can't stop smiling. This morning, I just feel like that this morning. Come on. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, you look good with that Holy Ghost smile. Now that's all right. Have it tomorrow morning. Your neighbors might appreciate it. Amen. Come on, we stub our toe. We shout about that. Why don't we shout about being stuck with the Holy Ghost? Amen. Let it just come out of us. Amen. Amen. I think it's so interesting. The Bible says, "Now the now the Lord is the Spirit. Is that Spirit? And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty." We, if you go to New York, there's a pretty lady, and, I, and she's beautiful, but you got to have good eyes to see her. I thought she'd be a lot bigger than that. My childhood memory of the Statue of Liberty, I thought she was gargantuan. But she's pretty big in her tip, but beautiful. But we know the Statue of Liberty, something that everybody knows about the U.S. Because when you study the word liberty, the word liberty is associated with the citizenship. Now, how many have ever been around from somebody from a different country or something? You've been around? And, and, so, and especially if it's been in a country that's been oppressed, you can tell by the way they carry themselves. The way they look around, the way they appreciate things, there's something different in the U.S. Hey, we pretty much got anything we want. We, we, we don't even think about it. We, it shows in the way that we act. And I believe when we become citizens under the Spirit of God, under His kingdom, we begin to act a little different. We don't care what anybody thinks. Don't worry, I'm not from here, amen? Maybe I am from another place today. Maybe, maybe you're meant to be, we're meant to be from another place. Now here's what I want you to see. Now the smile is associated with it. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now the very next verse, 2 Corinthians 3 and 18 says this, But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. Now, now, what does that mean? That's what you're seeing looking at the glass. I'm going to read it to you in just a second. Are changed in the same image from glory to glory, even as the Spirit of our Lord. Now, what does it say when you go over, and some people uh, don't like it, but I'm going to go over here to the parallel, and I'm going to put you on this. And uh, let's see here. I want to read it to you in the message. Now, if you've got your word, you can read it there. The, they suddenly recognize that in God is a living person, personal presence, not a piece of chiseled stone. Amen. How many are thankful for that today? Amen. And when God is personally present, a living spirit, that old constricting legislation is recognized as obsolete. We're free of it. Amen. Yes. Today, you are set under a new mentality. You know why you can worship today and you don't have to worry and be bound even by sickness? Because you have been bought. You are of another country. Amen. You're not even under the jurisdiction of those under the flesh. Amen. Here's what he says. All of us, nothing between us and God, our face is shining with the brightness of His face. That's what it was talking about, looking at that as a light shining. Amen? Today, I believe there's some shining lights around here. Amen? Amen. We're going to do something different in just a moment, and, and uh, we're going to have, we're going to move on in today. We're going to have a special word today and a song from Brother Bryant and the family. Amen? I have grown to know this guy. I appreciate the Bryants. Amen? How many are thankful for the spirit of the Bryants? interject something just before we get going and take off into that today. I want you to look at your neighbor and say this, if you, yes. if you would. I, I want, here's what I want to tell you first off. I want to tell you from me to you, I'm proud of you. But I want you to look at your neighbor and tell them the pastor's proud of you. The pastor Davis is proud of you. And, and the reason why I want us to realize that because what we have to do as a church, what is God's purpose for every one of us? Are any of, have any of us obtained today? Have any of us made uh, heaven our home just yet? Have we stepped through the door? Have we gained the prize as Paul has said? No. None of us can stand today and say, we can say I spoke in tongues, which is being filled with the power of the Spirit of God. We can say I've been baptized, means that I'm on the right path. But none of us today can say we made, but what we can say is that I'm one step closer today than I was yesterday. <laughs> Why I'm proud of every one of you today. We have to see this. And, and if it, every day that you leave here, I want you to know hey, that hey, man, if you've made a step closer to God, then you've done what you're supposed to do today. Amen. If you've made one step closer, now you may, some people may not agree with this, but what happens to a person 
that is not going to church anywhere, not praying. And then they show up at the church on Sunday. And last Sunday they weren't in church, but this Sunday they are. Aren't they a step closer to God than they were? Amen. Can we not rejoice with them just for the fact that they made it to the house of God? Amen. This is what we, that's what I'm talking about today, learning to rejoice in one another. There was a boy one day that went off to college and, and mom and dad didn't get to see him. He was there. He was a broke college kid eating ramen noodles and, and, and living off and he didn't have money to come home. So he went and he stayed all the way through Thanksgiving. He stayed through Christmas, stayed in the spring. And man, whenever he'd come back, dad looked at him and said, man, you have grown. He said, man, you have really grown. He said, Dad, I don't think I've really grown. He said, yes, you have, son. He said, look at, look at your pants. He said, you, when you were 5'8", now you're 5'11". He said, you didn't see it in your pants. He said, well, no, I just thought that everything shrunk when I started doing my own laundry. <laughs> because he didn't see where he had grown. And some of you don't realize it where you're grown, but we are growing in our praise in this house. Come on, we're growing. Sometimes we don't see where God is leading us or where God is taking us. But my girls, I, I've often found there's always the jokes about pastor's daughters that they're some of the wildest ones that are out there. And what I find is this, is that most of the time they do not get their confidence. Daddy's too busy preaching. Daddy's too busy talking about this. But sometimes not giving them the confidence. Uh, fathers, we have a very important part giving confidence to those little girls that God's put in our, our path. Amen? Not only little girls, anybody, our boys too. But they can draw them up there and they find their identity. The way that you love mama is the way that they're going to they're going to love, they're going to feel loved and what they're going to expect. So I begin to realize that the Lord allowed me to see it. So it got where my girls, I would, they would wake up in the morning and I'd say, come here, give dad a hug. I love you. You're beautiful. You know, you're handsome. And, and, and Allie would kind of put her head down sometimes. And she would look like that, you know, be a little shy. And, and Arianne too. And then I'd say, Wesley, you're the cutest little, little boy I've ever had. That's messy. And I'd say you're the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And you know, at first they were all kind of drawn back. When I first learned and started thinking about it, God showed it to me. But after a little bit of time, I began to talk to Allie. I said, Allie, come here, honey bear. I said, you know what? You know I love you so much. You're cute. And, and you're just beautiful. And she, and she looked at me and she said, I know. <laughs> and you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. See, the world wants us to be beat down. But our Father every day is telling us, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Come on, we need to start hearing that every day. You need to hear that your pastor's proud of you. I'm proud of you. Come on. I'm proud of the way that you're going. I'm proud that you're walking. I'm proud that you're hearing this story. I'm proud that you went up your love for worship today. I'm proud that you're going. You're beautiful. 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 You need to know it today. You need to know that you serve a God that loves you. He's proud of you. He cares about you. When we see it in that full day. But we have to understand that there's a growth process. None of us today are where we want to be at perfectly. But as long as we're walking where God leads us, then we're right. There was a boy one day walked up. He had two pennies. And I'm, I'm looking forward to the spring. When I, when I was thinking about this, I said, man, this makes me ready for the spring and the summer. I'll be ready for some big old fat, juicy red tomatoes to come off the bottom. <laughs> Sister Paulette, I'm sorry about y'all. get you something else. But I love the tomatoes. You know, she's allergic to them. The boy went up to a stand and said, uh, sir, he said, I'd like to buy a tomato. He said, all I've got is two pennies right here. He said, you know what? I'd like to buy that one right there. And the man said, well, son, he said, that's a big, pretty tomato right there. He said, I'll tell you, I can't sell that for two pennies. He said, but uh, I'll sell it to you for a dime. He said, I don't have a dime. So he looked around and he said, well, what about that green one right there? Can I have that one right there for two pennies? He said, well, you sure can. He said, all right. And he gave him his two pennies. He said, I'll come back next week and get it. <laughs> <laughs> see, this is the problem. Sometimes we see ourselves as green tomatoes. But with a little bit of time, come on, with a little bit of time, a little bit of growth, a little bit of strength, a little bit of direction, you're going to be that big, juicy red tomato. Come on. Hey, you today you may not see it, but you're somebody in God's image. You're somebody under God's blood. Amen. You may be see. I'm getting ready to call it Brother Brian. I'm just feeling excited in the Holy Ghost today. Amen. Here's what we get in Galatians 6 and 8. It says, and let us, or 6 and 9, and let us not be weary in well-doing. Now here's the part that we look at. Now we understand being in doing well. We understand working and that it can be a task, farming and building. But here's what it says in verse 9. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. 
Sometimes we think that when we do well, there's an instant return. Some of you think that, well, I've come to God and all of a sudden now I'm going to be a bright red, red tomato tomorrow. But in due season, if you'll hold on, if you'll keep on stepping, come on, in due season, in due season, God's bringing it in your life. Brother Brian, I'm so encouraged by you. I love you, brother. Brother, come on, I'm telling you something. Brother Brian is taking so this. I, God is teaching him to pray. He's growing in. I'm proud of him. Come on, come on. I was sick. Thank you all so much for praying. Amen. And all of a sudden, I got, I, I got, and I was sitting there, and I woke up, and I heard the phone beep, and I thought, well, what's going on? And my phone ringer was off, and I got a message, and all of a sudden, I began to listen to it, and it was from one of the prayer warriors at the church, and tears began to run down my face. See, you don't understand this, Brother Bird. This man's a prayer warrior. You may not see it. Oh, yeah. This man right here is, I believe, come on, if there's anybody that I'm going to call on to pray, I believe in Brother Bird's prayer. text from and saying, hey, I've got to leave at 11 o'clock, but Pastor, would you like me to come in early to maybe that I can go ahead and draw it up on the chalkboard and go ahead and put it in there? I said, well, no, I don't want to change. But the very fact that two weeks and three weeks ago, they weren't even going, but now they're offering to come in any night of this week. They wrote me back to so come by Monday. I can even come by early on. They're growing. We need to embrace one another. Because the enemy is going to get in your mind and say, and, then, and even that person, and all of us have done it, well, I'm still battling this. Listen, when somebody tells you that, yeah, listen, we need to know that every one of us battle things. Yeah. Right. Every one of us face things, but the fact that you haven't given up, the fact that you kept on fighting, the fact that that, amen, it's, a, it's an encouragement to that today for us today. Just say that word, with those words with me. In new season. Amen. Brother Brian is somebody that I've got to know a little bit, spent some time with him. I love him. And you know that, some of you know what, what the doctor had diagnosed him with Parkinson's. And, you know what, and I know that he had been sick. I know that he's faced those things. There's time to, but you know what? This is somebody that in due season, come on, they, they just keep on marching. Yeah. Come on, I, I just, I feel like he's been extremely sick. And in due season, I, I talked to him about preaching. He said, yeah, he said, uh, he said, yeah, pastor, I'm going to be ready. I said, okay. You know what? I, I gave him opportunity if he didn't feel like it. But you know what? I believe today is him standing up and saying, you know what? I've got something today and God is working today. Amen. Yeah. Come on. already been done. Amen. When the Holy Ghost gets to moving, Amen. you don't really need a lot of preaching. Right. I asked the Lord, that, Lord, why am I here this morning? <laughs> He's already come. Right. He's already took over. If y'all bear with me a little bit, I want to try to sing a song that I used to sing with my mom when I was a little bitty boy. Right. And uh, bring back a lot of memories to me. Y'all bear with me. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Be something. We're gonna go somewhere. Amen. Amen. This is a song about Stephen.
on your on your heels. He gonna catch up with you. So if there's anybody here today that's running from God and you know what I'm talking about, he will catch you. He's got a he's got a rope that can fit perfectly around you, pull you down and tie you up and make you do what he wants you to do. <laughs> I come from Mississippi. I'm an old Mississippi boy. I'm just who I am. I'm just a, an old country boy. I had a good mom and daddy. Now, my daddy didn't really get along with the Lord. Uh -oh. I want to just take my time. That'd be all right? Yeah. And Jesus and my father just didn't really get along too good. He didn't go to church. But my father knew the Bible. He read the Bible. In the community, every time there's a church to be built, 
He was always there, faithful to be there to build that church. But when it come time, Brother Davis, to fill that church, my father wasn't there. You know who was there? My mother. So he built, she went. Mother loved church. Bless her heart, I had a very wonderful mother praying and fasting, seeking God in three hours of the morning. Ain't that what we're supposed to do? Amen. And she prayed for me when I was coming up. I was the baby of the family. We had a large family. Had seven. One died before I was born. And uh, she always told me I was the baby of the family. It was about 13 years difference between me and my baby sister. And she lived in Rising Sun, Maryland here. That's why I'm up here. And she told me one day, she said, Son, you are God giving you for a special reason. And I couldn't understand that right then. All I know is I knew I had a wonderful mother. Because when she told me something, I could take it to the bank. It was going to cash. So I thank God for you. Mothers and fathers that's living with God and trying to get you to the right. I haven't said much about my wife back here, Sister Bryant. I have got one of the most wonderful, wonderful wives that a man could have. When they anointed him more, they anointed both of us with oil. They put a chair, two chairs, in the front of the pulpit right here. And that Sunday morning, the Holy Ghost was moving. And we sat down in that chair and they put a big tile around our head. Now, the way they anoint with oil is like they anointed David with oil. I won't get to my message in a minute. But he poured oil all over his head. If you go back and read when he anointed David. Back then, that was a custom of the Israelites is to pour a lot of oil. Now, when we come into the church that morning, up here you had a little table right here, and I seen a big bottle of oil. I mean a big bottle, like a gallon of milk. And I looked at the wife, and we had already been told by some friends of ours now, brother, I'm going to tell you, he likes to know the oil. So I looked at my wife, and I said, honey, Surely he ain't going to pour on at all. I got my dress clothes on. <laughs> Praise God he did. But he poured a lot. He poured that big bottle of oil in a horn. A regular cow horn. I mean a good cow horn. He might have well poured the bottle on. Because the horn was as big as the bottle. But thank God we got anointed. at my wife and he said looked at me and he looked at Sister Bryant and he said now, Sister Bryant I'm sorry she had her hair fixed up so pretty that morning oh. I'm sorry but I've got to pour oil on your head <laughs> she didn't shake her head she didn't smile she didn't frown she didn't do nothing she just got blank so he poured it out oil and he looked at both of us he said Brother Bryant this is not just your ministry this is y'all's so my wife, she helps me a lot when I, the Lord gives me scriptures and, and messages and everything, and I write them down. Sometimes it takes quite a while, but the days don't it, to get a message together. And then it comes to fasting and praying and seeking God. God, let me preach it right. God, let me deliver it like you want me to deliver it. You know, we cannot do anything within ourselves. It's got to be God. God has got to speak to us. The Holy Ghost this morning is so good. I felt in the spirit while I was playing my guitar up here that they some here that is is in bondage. They some here that wants to be free. Wants to be delivered in the power of the Holy Ghost. I felt that very strong. Now, I ask you the question this morning. What is bondage? Webster's Dictionary describes bondage as being in subjection to some force or influence. Now, when you're in bondage, you're a captive. Yes, Amen. 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 Now, the devil as we know him, which don't care about anybody, he's got so many today in bondage. He's got them held down. He's got them tied up. And they feel like that they can't do anything for God. They feel like that they cannot 
step out on their own and get something from God. Now, when the minister gets up here, Brother Davis, and uh, uh, my brother here, Brother Bo, and starts preaching the Word of God, when that Word of God goes forth, at that time is when you need to really get a hold of God in your heart and your mind. Saying, this is the day, God, I'm going to surrender. I'm going to give you my all. Now, there is some here today, I cannot lay my hand on you, but I feel it in the Holy Ghost, that wants to get out of that pew and make their way to this altar. Now, you don't have to come down to this altar. I have seen them fill the Holy Ghost in the pew. But God is looking for those that whoever will. Whoever will. Whosoever will. Now when we think of bondage, we automatically, being a child of God, think about the Israelites in bondage in Egypt. Is that right? Now they was in bondage somewhat 430 years or so. Under the hand of Pharaoh. I mean, they was there. Now, they were just like us. We go through sickness. We go through financial problems. I heard the testimonies this morning. And there are people here that have needs. We all have needs. My wife and I, we have needs. Brothers and sisters Davis have needs. God is the only one that can supply those needs. And He will supply those needs. But we have got to have one thing and keep it strong. And that's our faith. When we keep our faith strong, God will deliver it. Exodus 13 and 3, Jesus speaks to Moses. And Moses said unto the people, I'm sorry, Moses was talking. Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which ye came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by my strength of hand, the Lord brought you out from this place. And then he was given them instruction, There shall no leaven bread be. God had told him what to tell the Israelites. Now they was in strict bondage. I mean strict bondage. Amen. If I take just a second, I want to tell you a little story. It's a true story. When I was 19 years old, right out of high school, graduated in 1966, just a young kid, didn't really know nothing. Didn't even have a trade. There was 214 of us on a commercial airliner going to Vietnam. We flew out of Fort Lewis, Washington. That's a lot of men with four stewards. As we was flying along, we got into what they call Russian airspace. Sometimes you'll get into the enemy's territory, if you know what I mean. Now, as we was flying along there, well, a big fighter, a Russian big fighter, come up on the left of us, was pointing down. That's how close he was to us. That scared me. To be up in a big plane like that, and to see a big fighter pointing down, he meant for us to land that plane. Amen, First thing come to my mind, Lord, we're going to be prisoners of war. Well, we went in some clouds and we lost him. And we come out a little bit and there was nobody there. We felt so relieved. And I'm talking about bondage this morning. When we come out of the clouds, one come up on the right side of the plane, another big fighter, and this, I guess the same one come up on the left side. And the one on the left side, both of them was pointing down to land. The one on the left side shot some rounds out ahead of our plane to let our pilot know I mean business. And I want y'all to land. You're in our territory. You're in our territory. So then we landed on a little bitty air base that the airstrip was so small, they didn't tell us at the time, they didn't know that big plane was going to be able to land there, much less take off. Yeah. There was 214 men plus the stewardess on there was in jeopardy of our lives. We didn't know if they were going to shoot us out of the air. We didn't know what they, if they was going to kill us when they got us on the ground. We did not know. Now, we was not at war with Russia at that time. We were at war with Vietnam. And we started talking amongst ourselves. We're not even going to make it to Vietnam. They, we fix to lose our lives now. But thank God, they got a hold to Washington. All right. And the dignitaries got their heads together, scratched a little bit, and talked our release. Said, we're going to let them go. All right. So when we got on, 
we stayed on that plane for three days and two nights. Could not get off of that plane. Now that's bondage, sure. Now if you've never been in a situation like that, but it's almost the same situation. It's something you're living in right now. That we call bondage. Anything's got you bound down. Anything you can't get loose from. I like freedom. Praise God, I like freedom. When I was in Vietnam, I, did, I wasn't free. I was under the rule of somebody telling me, Brian, you do this. Brian, you do that. Here's another load. Here's another round of ammunition. All I can think of, I want to go home. I've had enough of this place. I, I, I want to go home. God kept his hand on me and got me out of there. Now when that plane got ready to leave, I'm taking a little bit of time. When that plane got ready to leave, that plane backed all the way up the back of that runway. It was a car and it's still runway they call PSP. It hooks together. Some of your brother might know it been in the military. The pilot come on then. We hadn't even heard from the pilot too much. He said, gentlemen, if y'all can pray, pray right now. This plane, it was a brand new Boeing 707. This plane has never taken off of a runway this short, this long. My Lord, I was scared to death. I didn't have the Holy Ghost. I didn't know God. I knew of God. How many here today that knows of God, but don't really know God? Through the power of the Holy Ghost. If that's the situation, you're in bondage. You're still in bondage. I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. I'm talking to somebody. So he gave it all he got, and that whole plane just shook. And we finally got off, got in the air, and you could hear nothing but clapping and screaming and hollering. Right. You'd have thought they was in a Pentecostal church. Right. And at that time, I wish I had been. Oh, I wish I had been. Praise the Lord. Now, from my mother's womb, we was born into sin and iniquity, as the Bible says. Right, yes. And sin kept us totally in bondage unto slavery. Unto slavery. Right. Everybody wants to be free. Everybody wants to be able to have the things in life that they would like to have that makes them comfortable. But sometimes you don't get everything you want. Now by allowing Satan to control our lives, we become slaves of our own simple habits. And those habits keep us in bondage. Amen? Right. They keep us in bondage. And Satan loves that. That's right where he wants us. If he can keep us in bondage, keep us down, keep us fearful, we stop our prayer life, we stop our fasting, we stop our church going, we stop coming to prayer meeting. Why? We're in bondage. It's a type of bondage. Now we don't look at it as bondage. We just look at it, well, I just don't feel like going tonight. I, I'm sick. My nose run this morning. But when you make that effort to come, things happen. Things happen. Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about, with so great a cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Yes. Amen. Yes. There's always some little element somewhere <coughs> want to hold you back. Yes. Want to give you an excuse. Uh -huh. Well, you can go next week. There'll be another Bible study. But just maybe, just maybe God has got something for you at that Bible study. At that Sunday morning service. What God did this morning, this don't happen every service, does it? It happened for a reason. Somebody here today moved up a couple of notches on the ladder. <laughs> Somebody here today is going to walk out. That door fit on a little better than they walked in. Am I right, sister? There's nothing like feeling good in the Holy Ghost. Absolutely nothing. I remember my little brother back here that comes with us. Another farmer when he got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he got a dose. 
Now, it was all over him. That's what we call it back home, just an old dose. He got a dose of the Holy Ghost. I mean, God poured it off his head and his feet. <laughs> and that's the way it's supposed to be. And every time uh, he got up to sing, that big smile, you can see them teeth ear to ear. He said, this is a happy house. What he was trying to say, what's inside of my soul <laughs> that's burning and churning and bubbling makes me happy. Makes me happy. Hallelujah. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, we be of Abraham's seed. This is the Sadducees and the Pharisees. We be of Abraham's seed. He was always trying to trick God. And never in bondage to any man to say us thou. You say we're free? You're telling us we're free? They were still under the old Mosaic law. They were still under Moses' his, his law. When Jesus come to this earth and went to that cross, He said, I come not to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. Amen. 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 That's when by grace and mercy of God that we was able to receive His precious Spirit. Amen. 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 Romans 6, 16, 18. I didn't get such a day to pull these up. I'm sorry. It says, Know ye not that whom ye yield yourselves servants to are to obey. His servants are to whom ye obey. Whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. That's what I just said a while ago. Right. Whatever you allow to control your life, your spirituality, whatever you allow in Satan to whisper into your ear, we need the church pray for our young people today. Yes. Our young people is really under a lot of bondage today. Yes. They go to school. That us elderly people most of us is retired. We can go home and do our daily chores around the house. But these children of ours has to go into an environment yes. where Satan is mightily strong and moving yes. and gets stronger every day. Yes. If we've ever given them advice, if we've ever kept them in church and tried to pull them close to God, this is the day. Amen. This is the day. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Whatever you allow to bind you down this morning, whatever you allow to hold you down, there is freedom. All right. Oh, my Lord. Like I just said, Brother Farmer, there's freedom. Brother Farmer can tell you when he got the Holy Ghost, he didn't know nothing about it. None of us did. Before we come to God, we was in bondage, wasn't we? We lived for Satan, but we really didn't know we was living for Satan. We called it living for ourselves. We're living for the day. I've heard some young people say, we're living for the moment. <laughs> But that moment is running out. Yeah. It's coming in time soon that there's not going to be another moment to live for God. Mm. When God gets ready for His people, I imagine the church is going to be flooded out with people looking through the window, maybe trying to break the door down to get to an altar. When we've got the most perfect time in the world right now to live for God. Young people, I'm speaking to you as well. Yes. All of us is not a better time to live for God because we are on the end time. We're living in the end time right now. Verse 17 says, But God be thanked that we were servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that from the doctrine which was delivered to you. Now we know the doctrine. The apostles' doctrine. There has never been another doctrine. Jesus come to this earth. He preached one gospel. He brought one truth with him and he passed that on to the apostles. Now who did the apostles pass it on to? Us Gentiles. When Peter went to Cornelius' house, that's when us sitting right here got the chance to live for God and know what the Holy Ghost is all about. Being then made free from sin, ye because the servants of righteousness. Hallelujah. But now being made free from sin, and become servants to God. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. What a precious gift God has given us. Hallelujah. 
The same spirit that loosed us from the sin that had us bound is the same spirit that sets us free. And that's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost. John 11, 43, 44. And when he had thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead come forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. I want to tell you something. The Israelites has got a custom when a, a Jew dies, they wrap them like a mummy or something like a mummified wrapping from their head to their toe. Now, they are wrapped real tight. They can't move. Their legs are straightened out. Their body becomes stiff, according to death, and they wrap them, and then they put ointments on them to keep the smell down. Now, they put Lazarus in a tomb. Now, I understand. I've never been there. I'd love to go sometime. They put him in a tomb. And going down into that tomb, the stairs wind around, they say, to get to the bottom of it. That's where they put Lazarus. Now, I don't know how many steps there was. I don't know how deep the, the tomb was. But they put him down. Put him down in there. Wrapped up. Now, when Jesus walked up there, now, if you go back and read, Jesus paused for a couple of days. In other words, he told the disciples, he said, well, going to tarry over for a couple more days here. Jesus did that for a reason. Because he knew that Lazarus was just sleeping, according to him. Now Mary and Martha, they loved Jesus. Jesus loved them. That was a close-knit operation there. They really loved each other. Now when I read this over and over and I love it, what we felt this morning is what they felt right then. Power is power no matter how you When Jesus walked up to that tomb, yes. he didn't say, Lazarus, come forward. He said, Lazarus, come forward. With authority. With the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, when he said that, I'm assuming in my mind Lazarus laying on that slab or whatever it was opened his eyes. Uh -huh. Now he couldn't swing around and bend his knees because they was wrapped up. Right. So the power of God that opened his eyes was the same power of God that allowed him not even touch a step problem. The power of God brought him up all them steps to the top. <laughs> and Jesus says he's not sleeping. I mean, he's I'm sorry, he's sleeping. He's much alive, but he's just sleeping. Right. So that same power is what we feel today. What we felt this morning. What we felt this morning lined up perfect for this lesson. All right. Thank you, Lord. And then Jesus said one time, He said unto them, Loose him. All right. And let him go. Loose him. And let him go. He was loose. He was free. Now he was bound down, wasn't he? If I was wrapped up that much, I would be bound down. But Jesus said, Loose him. Let him go. He don't need them wrappings no more. Because the power of God had just resurrected him. Now I'm fixing to close. With all the love and compassion that God has for mankind. He said in John 15 and 9, verse 10, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. John 8 and 32. And he shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Now, if you want to hear the truth, you come right here. Amen. The truth is being preached here. Amen. There's a lot of them in this world that we go to work with, we fellowship, family members that don't have the truth. They're bound. They're bound. They're just like Lazarus in that tomb. They're wrapped and wrapped and wrapped. They're bound down. 
Satan loves to get you bound down. Because when you listen to him and obey him, that's the rabbit. That's the rabbit. But when you allow God to say, loose him, let him go. When Jesus cast the devil out of him, he said, with authority, come out of him. Come out. When God speaks, you listen. Hallelujah. God has been so good. Yes, He has. Amen. So good. Thank you, Lord. He's kept us aboard. Yes, He has. He's been with us when we're down. Yes, He has. And I'm a perfect example. I feel bad this morning, but I feel good in the Holy Ghost. Yes. But when God allows you to do something for Him, I want you to listen to me. When God allows you to do something for Him, don't say no. Yes. Say, God, I'll do my best. Now, I'm not a preacher like Brother Davis here or Brother Bo, but I do know one thing. I know what the Holy Ghost feels when it gets on me. Amen. I know what it means when that hot tear is rolling down my face, when I'm there in that carpet at my office praying. I know what that is because I do enough of it. I want to get so close to God that I can feel His breath. I can feel His heartbeat. This is the same thing Brother Davis has been saying. Church, let's move up another night. Let's quit waiting out in ankle deep water. Let's get out to where God wants us in that deep, deep water. When you get out there, it's deep. It's almost to you, over your head. You can't do anything because of the weight of the water. That's when God says, now it's time for you to surrender. It's time for you to surrender. I've got you in a place where you can't move too much. God is wanting to do things. God is wanting to move in mighty ways in our life. Let's pray for each other. Keep the other lifted up in the Lord. Let's witness and tell our family we've got a move of God here. I can't wait to get tomorrow and tell somebody what we had this morning. I want to thank y'all so much for allowing this opportunity. May the Lord bless you.